Family and friends, we gather here today to celebrate the life and honour the memory of Elvina May Power, known to most as Miss Vicky. Welcome. I'd like to begin the ceremony by inviting Ch uh, Father Charlie Budsani to come forward and give us a blessing and lead us in prayer. Thank you. Good morning, all. I'm here uh, to sympathise with Mark and Matthew and the family here, and uh, Michael and the family for the passing of Vicky. And for those who are from the Catholic uh, tradition, you know that the sprinkling of the holy water of the coffin, and that uh, symbolize Vicky present here with us, represents her baptism, and bring this spiritual presence that accompany her soul into heaven. And my role here is to pray with you all over her body, that her soul will be received by the most merciful God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. As you know of St. Francis, he said that Sister Death has called our sister Vicky today. And despite our sadness, we give thanks that her earthly life has come to an end and she is now at peace. We place on her coffin reminders of her baptism and life in Christ. We come together as God's family to celebrate Vicky's birth to eternal life. As we begin this time of prayer, we reflect on our own lives and the challenges we meet and we ask for God's mercy and strength. Lord Jesus, our hearts are heavy. We know that you alone can we trust. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal all our wounds. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the waters of baptism, Vicky died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May Vicky now share eternal life with Christ in glory. Let us pray for our sister Vicky. God of blessing, source of all love and peace, the voice of your Spirit has drawn countless people to follow Jesus Christ and to bind themselves to you with a ready will and loving heart. Look with mercy on Vicky, our sister, who sought to live a life of faith through her actions and words, and grant her the reward promised to all good and faithful people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Charlie. My name is Vanessa and I'm a celebrant and the family have given me the privilege of conducting the ceremony for Vicky today. Beloved mother of Mark, Bill and Sharon, former wife of Peter and partner of Nikki, sister of Pat and Beverly, mother-in-law of Carleen and Michael, grandmother, auntie, and much-loved friend. When someone we love passes away, we are faced with trying to understand one of life's great mysteries. But I believe the following words are a way of looking at death that is comforting and makes it just a little easier to understand. It's a quote by Leo Buscaglia, who was an author, teacher, and a man of great wisdom. I know for certain that we never lose the people we love, even to death. They continue to participate in every act, thought, and decision we make. Their love leaves an indelible imprint in our memories. We find comfort in knowing that our lives have been enriched by having shared their love. With these words in mind, today there is an opportunity to acknowledge the love and friendship you have for Vicky. She made a special contribution to this world and now begins the process of healing and saying goodbye. 
It means a great deal to the family that you have come to join them in this bittersweet experience of recalling Vicky's 77 years of life. She passed away peacefully at 11pm on Sunday the 28th of April at Summit Aged Care in Bronte. Diagnosed with glioblastoma, an aggressive type of brain cancer just 12 weeks before, Vicky began a rapid decline. And although her death still comes as a shock to all, particularly to her family, they take comfort in knowing that she is no longer suffering. Today there'll be some laughter and a few tears as we tell stories about Vicky and say goodbye. It is important to convey that we are here to celebrate Vicky's life and before the illness took hold, it was a life that she loved and enjoyed. So today I ask that you focus on the good times you shared, the occasions you joined in, both special and ordinary, and let's celebrate the many great years that Vicky did have. The time that her son Mark has given me has formed a portrait of a supportive, non-judgmental woman with a deep love for her family. A voracious reader, Vicky enjoyed all sorts of books, loved watching Home and Away and doing a bit of gardening. She also enjoyed the occasional flutter. Vicky never met a poker machine she didn't buy. True. But when it came to her work life, Vicky had tremendous drive and resilience and a real need to succeed. This drive started with humble beginnings as a showy, selling and making Cupid dolls on canes at Brisbane fairgrounds and selling tie-dyed t-shirts at the local flea markets. Then at the tender age of just 16, Vicky was crowned rock and roll dancing champion of Townsville. And this was the start of a colorful and lengthy career in show business. Vicky was an all-rounder, dancer, singer, stand-up comedian and theatrical agent. So many talents all rolled into one very gifted and hard-working showgirl. She toured countless burlesque shows around Australia, New Zealand, Thailand, India, Malaysia and Japan. A bit like the movie Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, Vicky would produce, promote and tour with a group of dancers on a tour bus, do a show in a remote town, then get straight back on the bus and set out for the next town. Life on the road was a big part of the job and there was always another town to visit, another show to do. At one stage, Vicky even owned a nightclub. It seems uh, there was nothing that she couldn't turn her hand to. During her career, Vicky worked alongside and shared venues with some of the biggest names in show business, including Bonnie Tyler and Sammy Davis Jr. Reassuring and positive, Vicky was always an encouraging mentor to other performers. During auditions, Vicky was never one to criticise a dancer if they were struggling with a routine, but instead she'd suggest that they go away and practise and then come back and audition again. She approached her personal life this way too. Vicky would never close the door on anyone and always gave people another chance. I asked her son Mark what, might, what he might have learnt from his mother and he answered easily, love, conviction and commitment to family. Vicky would always stick by those she loved and this quality, this is a quality that he will forever admire in his mother and endeavours to apply to his own life. This is just a snapshot of Vicky's life and you'll hear more shortly when her family share loving tributes. Look through the whole world and there is no one quite like Vicky. Be grateful you got to see her face and hear her laughter and feel the touch of her hand and know that her light will not be diminished by the lack of her physical presence, but let it live on in you. I'd now like to invite Vicky's uh, son, Bill, and daughter-in-law, Carleen, to come forward and share a few words. grandmother. She's got these little feet and this great big heart. Her great grandmother passed my, my great, my mother, her grandmother passed around my mother's 30th birthday and 
is the baby is called the spirit. Yeah. And it's, yeah, so it, it's like a cycle. But getting ready for getting ready to call me, it's like it, these are cycles that continue and the characteristics that we inherit, not only genetically, is it and it, William too. William Garrett. We've got two beautiful she had two beautiful grandchildren. She had two she brought us in this so world, man. This little lady who was these little feet and she and she had so many obstacles and, and she young out of all the way and everyone she never met a person that wasn't she wasn't like if you couldn't turn them around, give her half an hour and she had to turn around. You know what I mean? Like comedy acts. She do comedy acts in like outback mining towns. She'd be telling some guy, Who cut your hair, mate, the council? <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the show, the guy would be wanting to kiss her. You know what I mean? Like, that was mum. Um, Can I say you can say whatever you want. Oh, I just want to say, on behalf of my daughter Courtney and my son William, I know you're upset, Courtney, because your name wasn't. Oh, come on, here we go. And uh, yeah, well, she was upset. That's all. She was upset that she said, "Where's my name?" <coughs> this isn't okay. Courtney, everyone in that is not. Yeah, everyone, everyone matters. We love you. You're all going to miss it. This is our last chance to say, and I invite anybody else that has, has a memorable or some, a story or something that they feel like they want to share, please come up and share. Please, I really, I could, we could use it, we could use it for a bit of Vicky time, you know, some Vicky moments, all right, um, they'll, they'll love you, 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 they'll love everybody, you know, I'm, I'm sure my sister, Karen, she's coming up and something she would, she would yeah. love to say, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, I think I've said it. I've spoken. We're going to miss her so very much. <laughs> you know, whenever there was a problem, that Vicky was always there for us. <laughs> it's going to be so hard. But she's not there. <laughs> not there. Yeah. She's still there. Twenty years. Twenty years ago, Carla lost her mum, and for twenty years, she's mum has been Vicky. For Carlene, that was mum was yeah, that was her mum. I'd now like to invite Vicky's daughter, Sharon, to come forward and share some memories. It's lovely to see so many of you here today. I'd just like to say that I'm wearing Mark's reading glasses because <laughs> I forgot mine. So they look I'm, good. Very, I'm very grateful. They suit. <laughs> very I'd like to say that Vicky is my loving birth mum. I was very fortunate to meet her after my 40th birthday. For those of you who don't know me, I was adopted and Vicky was very young when she gave birth to me. Uh, the reason I never really tried to, I suppose, find my birth mum is because I believe somehow in my heart that she'd made the best decision for me. I had wonderful adoptive parents, um, but I was so grateful one day when the phone rang 
and this is where it all began. It was just after my 40th birthday and my first husband had left me with my two young children. I was staying with my adopted parents at the time and the phone rang and this strange lady on the phone was saying, um, I went to school with you and I'm just ringing just to say hello and find out some information and can I please just check your date of birth? Yeah. And I thought, who is this strange, strange person ringing me up to ask me this question? Anyway, I spoke to her for a little while and left it at that. The next day, I received this letter in the mail. It was an express post envelope from Sydney. Thinking, who's sending me something express post from Sydney? At the letterbox, I opened the envelope to find a photo. As soon as I saw this photo, I knew it was my mum. It was the biggest incredible rush that I can I can't explain. I, I sat on the on the footpath in a heap, touching onto this photo, thinking this is my mother, I know it is. And I hadn't even read the letter that was in there. I just took one look at that photo and I knew. From then on, it was the most wonderful time for me. The letter was beautiful, explaining why I'd been adopted. Mum was so good with her writing. She always wrote beautiful letters to me. Um, and I understood that what she did was for the best for me. I was so grateful and she left me her phone number and said, please ring me. I just want to be a friend. So I rang her and from then on, I was so blessed that we had a meeting at the Gold Coast. Mark and Courtney came and Carlene. It was absolutely beautiful. I remember standing there holding her. We, we held each other for what seemed like such a long time. It was the most beautiful meeting. Um, we had so much to share. I had my two boys with me. They're now grown, so you will be pleased to know that Mum had another two beautiful grandchildren as well, as Courtney and William. So she had four beautiful grandchildren. Brendan and Justin. Brendan and Justin couldn't be here today. But they loved their Nana Vicky so dearly. Justin used to talk on talk to her on the phone and he misses that so much. My son Brendan has autism and I brought him down in January and we spent time with Mum and Mark and Michael then. So I'm really pleased that we had that time together in January. We laughed and shared so many memories. Mum was so selfless, always thinking of others to the point where even when I FaceTimed her from Brisbane when she was ill, she would say to me, darling, I'm okay, what about you? I'm worried about you. God bless you, Mum, and keep you safe. Keep those angels in tune with your beautiful voice. Please continue to watch over me and my boys, Mum. My wish today is that I had more time with you. <coughs> I cherish every moment that we spend together. <laughs> Rest in peace, Mum, until I see you again. <laughs> I love you. Next up, I'd like to invite Grace, a friend of Vicky's from the old days, to come forward and share some memories. Hi, I'm Grace, for those of you that don't know me, and those of you that do. <laughs> Vicky was like a mother to me. <laughs> I will never forget the look on Vicky's face as I pushed her out of a window in Tasmania. <laughs> we drove through the night. 
<laughs> we, dro we drove through the night after a debacle at a venue and we tried to find a motel room in Launceston. Nothing was open. But um, I had a skill on picking locks. <laughs> so, uh, I learned how to get in this hotel room. But in the morning when the cleaners came to uh, clean, we had to get out of there. So um, here's me, Miss Vicky with a bag full of show costumes, and I'm trying to push her out the window. <laughs> this is just one of the many, many fond memories I have of Miss Vicky. As I said before, she was like a mother to me. She took me under her wing when I was in a bad place, took me on tour, and if it wasn't for Miss Vicky, I doubt very much if I'd be standing here today. Mark has always been a big sister to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Vicky has always been like a mum to me. I will never forget the last phone call I had with Miss Vicky, which was just before she went to Bronte. And she said, I'm okay, lovey. I'm not scared. Just remember, you were always my first Asian showgirl. <laughs> you will always be my Venus Rose. Tell our lovey, and then she hung up with me. <laughs> I want to remember the happy thoughts because she was an amazing woman, larger than life. Thank you. And we were all blessed to be part of her life. Thank you. Thank you. And next up, I'd like to invite Peter, Vicky's former husband. He's going to come and share a musical tribute. What you meant. I know what you meant. We knew what you meant. We got rid of the beefsteak a long time ago. It's vegan now. It's on vegan, isn't it? It's gone vegan, yeah. <laughs> anyway, when I met her, it was a pretty wild night. I came in with quite a few of the, the girls, and uh, she looked at me, and I looked at her, and I thought, she's not a bad sort, isn't it? So we, I was playing the guitar and in the band, and she said to me, uh, um, I'm a dancer, and I'm just learning to sing. She said, oh, yeah. So she said, would you help me to sing? And I said, sure. So when we, when I saw her, when I went back to her, her place. When I went back to her, <laughs> no, I am in the bourbon. <laughs> when I went back to her place, she started doing all this back middle of stuff and that. And, and, uh, she said, how did I go? And I said, oh, it's all right. Shocking. Okay. <laughs> so, what have I got to do? I said, well, when we, in the old days when we learned Beatles songs, we do them about 30 times a go each time. So you've got to keep going over and over and over. And he, anyway, she wore herself out singing this. And she said to the end of it, what do you reckon? I said, keep that up every day like that for about a month. All right. <laughs> Anyway, she was just incredible, so and uh, she nothing stopped her because she said to me, "What's the secret?" I said, "Just keep doing it, love. Just keep doing it." And um, one day when we, I used to back her up around the shows. And one day we were working, and I said to Vicky, "What's that stuff?" She said, "I've got these lights, love." I said, I said "What lights?" She said, it, 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 she said, they'll turn the lights off in the club. She said, and all the 
black lights will come and all the effects with my costumes will come out. I said, you're kidding. She said, yeah, I've had this bloke do it, fix it up. So she says, she's, she's, she's shown me what to do. What she's doing, she, she, she was going faster, faster than Tina Turner, flying around, and it was incredible. And so we went to this club, and um, this little bloke came up to me and he said, I can't get her lights going. I said, well, I said, well don't tell her that. <laughs> so anyway, eventually I heard him say, you know, that he couldn't get the get the lights going. Anyway, she screamed so loud he come running out and, and anyway, he got the lights going. <laughs> and, uh, so when we, she took me to Fiji, not Fiji, we went everywhere. We went to New Mia once and I had to back her up with all these Polynesian musicians that couldn't speak English. And I said, what am I going to do here? She said, well, you're going to have to show them up, they can't read. I said, that's going to take all day, Becky. She said, no, you'll be right, love. And um, there was this guy there, and he was, um, he came in. I said to Vicky, who's he? She said, he's just going to sing. I said, what's he going to sing? She said, he's part of the show. And I said, I'm talking to him. I said, what do you do, mate? He said, I do Elvis. He does Elvis Presley. Anyway, he came out of my night. He looked fantastic. His name was Elvis Fong. <laughs> That's true, that's what he called himself. Uh, look, I've got a little song okay. for Vicky because I'm not going to uh, sing the whole thing. You, you won't want to hear that. Uh, there's a thing, there's a couple of lines there called For you are beautiful and I have loved you dearly. More dearly than the spoken word can tell. And that's how I think about it, Vicky. Here we are.
Thanks so much. Thank you. You Next up, I'd like to invite Vicky's son and son-in-law, Mark and Michael, to come forward and speak, and then follow with a Buddhist farewell. I would, if I, if words could describe my mum, <coughs> loving, caring, kind, giving, honest, protective and beautiful. One of my favourite memories was selling tie-dyed t-shirts at a flea market on the Gold Coast when I was a child. Mum, I would call her, um, taking a size S t-shirt and the biggest man you've ever seen in your whole life. And, so, and he was going, do you think that'll fit me, love? And she'd go, oh, yes, just turn around. That'll definitely fit. And so she would sell T-shirts until there was no more T-shirts. So she always could sell anything to anyone. My favourite memories as an adult are probably the fact that Mum and I shared the stage together. We sang, and I didn't sing, but my mum was the singer and I was the dancer. It was almost like a dream that we'd be up there on stage together for so many years. So I'll always hold that dearly. Mum was a strong-headed, no-bullshit person. I am proud to call you mother. You never faltered. You were my rock and my protector. I will miss your baked custards and your Christmas cakes and your birthday cakes and I'll miss your sense of humour. You are my best friend and my confidant. I have no secrets. I could tell you anything and I knew you would always accept me. When I was 15 years old, I, this is just a funny story, I thought I was gonna be a girl. So I, went and, I, had, I had a fabulous dress, it was off the shoulder, pink and white. And I've come home to mum in Bondi and I've said, mum, I want to be a girl. And mum said, darling, I always wanted a daughter. <laughs> I would tell you every day that I love you. If I could take your pain, I would. You capsulate everything good in the world. You once told me I had the heart of the Buddha. And my answer was, no, mum, you have the Buddha heart because you can recognise it in other people. And her dogs, she was even friendly to rats in her garden. She would throw bread out her window to them and say they were hungry. And I'd say, don't do that, love. Your neighbours are going to think you're crazy. And she would understand my concerns. She had a love for Buddhism chanted numerous times every day and would ask selflessly for protection of everyone she loved. My mum also trusted Gui Ying, the Chinese goddess, and Mother Mary to also guard her family. She was devoted to her family and the belief of the divine. When I was going through my mum's photos, albums, I discovered a card I gave her many years ago it means more than ever, so I think that it's appropriate I read it now. Thank you, Mum. I want to apologise for any problems that I have caused you in the past. I'm not the easiest person to live with since I am so independent and strong. But you can be sure that though it possibly didn't seem like it, your values and ideals did pass on to me and I carry them forward in all that I do. You always were someone stable, strong, giving and warm, an ideal person to look up to. This has given me the strength to lead my own life. Your leadership and love have enabled me to grow into a very happy person. And I think this is what every mother wishes for her child. Thank you, love forever, your son, Mark. On that note, I would like to acknowledge how much love there is here today because of my mum. And with all my heart, I believe mum is shining down on us today. 
her blessing will always be here. And thank everyone for being here to celebrate my mum's life. Yes, let's just show our appreciation one more time to all our speakers and to Peter also for sharing today. Thank you. And next up, we're going to have a traditional Buddhist ceremonial farewell. And next up we're going to have a photo tribute which has oh, been kindly okay. put together by Vicky's son-in-law Michael.
was a really terrific <laughs> collection of photos and memories. <laughs> Next up, I'd like to invite Father Charlie to return to share a reading and lead us in the Lord's Prayer and the committal. And you'll find the Lord's Prayer printed in your order of service. Thanks. So in the order of service, we read through the book of uh, Proverbs. The woman of character, where is she to be found? She is more precious than any jewel. She brings only good and not evil all the days of her life. She gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her family. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. May she enjoy the fruits of her labor and may all praise her and her works. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks. Now we'll be praying the prayers of the final commendation. Before I do this, I just share my gratitude to, uh, first of all, Water Kata staff who allowed me to share Mark and Michael during this sad time. And Mark, this was a special service for a Catholic priest to be always sharing a family in this sorrow and understood the motive behind this. Thank you, Vanessa, for allowing me to be part in your uh, ceremony. And uh, if you allow me, as a Lebanese, we have a song for Mary, Our Lady, that Mark mentioned in his eulogy. I will sing one verse uh, on uh, behalf of Vicky that her soul will be rested. Yeah, Mary. شمس والقمر وكل نجم في الكون قاد سرا in God we have prayed together for our sister Vicky and now we come to our last farewell there is sadness in our parting but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Vicky again and enjoy her love humor and friendship although we may have sorrow in our hearts the loving kindness of God will gather us together again in the joy of the kingdom and now, as one community, let us console one another in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, loving Father, we commend our sister Vicky in the certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with Christ on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Vicky in her life. They are signs to us of your goodness and our communion with the saints in Christ. Gentle, tender God, Turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Vicky. 
Help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Vicky forever. Amen. Amen. May she rest in peace. Amen. Thanks, Father Charlie. While we think of Vicky's passing with sadness, we should also recall her life with respect and happiness. You see, nothing can detract from the closeness you shared with Vicky. Nothing can change your love for her or her love for you. It can never be altered by time, circumstance, or even death. What has been the past with all its meaning is sacred and secure. Talk about Vicky often and enjoy your memories of her just as we have today. Be grateful that she was a part of your lives and let her influence live on in you. Directly after this ceremony we'll be serving refreshments and you will have the opportunity to continue reminiscing and sharing stories about Vicky. In just a moment we're going to play two final songs to honour Vicky's memory. During this time our pallbearers are going to come forward and assist our friends from Walter, Walter Carter Funerals to escort Vicky out to the hearse. Now in closing, I'd like to read a poem by A.A. A. Milne. It contains a simple message of hope and is dedicated to each and every one of you here today. If ever there is a tomorrow when we're not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. But the most important thing is, even if we're apart, I'll always be with you. Thank you. May you find, thank you, <laughs> may you find strength and support in your love for one another and may dear Vicky rest in peace.